What happens if you put a capacitor in reverse? Well, if you ask YouTube, it goes bang. But I tested that myself and it turns out that is not always the case. Today we'll be looking at electrolytic capacitors in particular and what happens if you misuse them. Unlike other types like ceramic or film capacitors, electrolytic caps are usually polarized. They have a positive and a negative side and they must not be wired up the other way around. That is why polarity is always clearly labeled, both in circuit diagrams and on the capacitor itself. Connecting one incorrectly may cause it to, as Wikipedia puts it, burst in a spectacularly dramatic fashion, or it may produce a short circuit. I'm about to demonstrate all of this and you should know that I'll be using protection while filming. Please do not try any of this at home. I'll start by sacrifice, I mean testing, one of these. It's a pretty standard electrolytic capacitor made by Panasonic. It is rated for 100 microfarads and testing it quickly confirms it is within specs. For now. I am now setting the power supply to a modest 5 volts and for safety I am limiting the current to 100 milliamps. I'm also going to use this sophisticated transparent barrier for protection in case something goes off. Okay, let's turn the power on. 3, 2, 1 and nothing happens. Hmm, did I connect everything right? I mean wrong? Looks like it. Let's give it some more time and see what happens. The next 10 minutes were not eventful. The capacitor looked fine and testing it showed no change in capacitance. In theory, even lower voltages should be enough to cause damage, but maybe I cannot measure it like this. Or I guess you have to leave it like this for a few hours to see any actual degradation, but for now not much seems to be happening. Let's increase the voltage to 9 volts. Oh, now we're seeing something interesting. There is a small current going through the capacitor and it is slowly climbing. So we're measuring about 60 milliamps, but a few moments later the current is already dropping. I'm not sure why, so if you have any idea, let me know in the comments. The current was down to 10 milliamps 5 minutes later, so I disconnected the capacitor to take a look. Not surprisingly, it was slightly warm from the current and I also noticed a small bulge was starting to form, probably from internal pressure buildup. Testing the cap showed that it had lost about 15% of its rated capacity, meaning that 15 minutes of 9 volts in reverse were enough to cause permanent damage. But let's keep on going anyway. 14 volts, how does that sound? This actually did it. I quickly got a very quiet pop and the electrolyte was leaking out of the capacitor. I think the failure wasn't that spectacular because my power supply put a limit on the current. So I raised the limit to 3 amps and tried again. This time I got a louder pop and some magic smoke managed to escape. But still I wasn't able to replicate what I was seeing in other videos, so I tried again. How about 24 volts and 6 amps? Once again a quick result, but nothing all that dramatic. Let's try a different cap like this Rubicon. Again 5 volts was not enough to do anything immediately, so I started to slowly raise the voltage. Current started going through it at 7 volts, and at about 9 volts we hit the 200 milliamp limit I had set. Now let's lift the limit and set the voltage to 20 volts. 3, 2, 1. And this was actually properly loud, and look at all that magic smoke I captured. I better leave this outside for a few minutes. And in the meantime, let's examine what's left of the capacitor, which is not a lot. I think I can explain why the bang was so much louder this time. You see those scores on top of capacitors? They are for safety. If the capacitor ever fails, if pressure starts building up inside it, they act as a safety valve, they are an intentional weak spot. But this safety feature did not work as intended on this cap and the gas escaped from the bottom. I assume we got a much higher pressure buildup and that is probably why we got a louder bang. Just to demonstrate, I popped another of the Panasonics and sure enough we can see that it cracked at the scores. All of them did, like they are supposed to. To see if cheaper capacitors are indeed less safe, I popped a few more. This no-name capacitor <coughs> failed as expected, it popped at the top, right at the scores. But then I tested these two in parallel and got surprising results. 
one of them exploded violently. I assumed it simply pushed the green one out of the breadboard, but maybe that wasn't the case. I tested the green one on its own and… nothing. But even though there was no bank, the capacitor was toast. It had actually developed a short circuit on the inside, as I confirmed with my testing device. One takeaway I have for you is that the fun answer isn't always the right or the only right answer. If you put a polarized capacitor in reverse by accident, it is likely to explode, and that is going to happen way before you reach its rated voltage. But as we saw, reversing the polarity may also cause a short circuit. In that case, the capacitor may not blow up, but something else probably will. And sometimes you may only get a small bulge on top of the capacitor, without any fireworks. Still, at this point you should probably throw that out. Another interesting observation is that cheaper capacitors tend to fail in a less predictable way. All the Panasonics that I tested popped at the top, as they should. But the cheaper caps blew however they felt like. I hope you found all of this useful and it was worth sacrificing a few capacitors to see what would happen. Please consider subscribing and if you have any comments, just drop them below. Thanks for watching.